स्टोरी टेलिंग इज बोथ एन आर्ट एंड अंडर साइंस इंटीग्रिटी इज अ कोर ऑफ अ स्टोरी वंस वी हैव द कॉन्टेक्स्ट क्लियर देन वी गो हैड एंड कंस्ट्रक्ट और स्ट्रक्चर अ स्टोरी सो दीज आर द नॉन नेगोशिएबल फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ एनी स्टोरी इट हैज टू बी समथिंग दैट एक्चुअली अपीज टू यू इट्स नॉट अबाउट हाउ मच कैन आई डिलीवर इट्स अबाउट हाउ मच वैल्यू कैन आई ब्रिंग ऑन टेबल the the uniqueness uh, in the art of storytelling welcome to the stars of learning podcast where your host jyoti ji expose the minds of the thought leaders who have vast experience and in-depth knowledge in the learning industry now over to your host jyoti ji hello everyone hearty welcome to season 3 of stars of learning podcast and my name is jyoti ji so friends in today's world no matter what you do we have grown up hearing to stories and we are all storytellers and don't you agree that we build a strong connection with people with stories now are you connecting to an interesting story told by your mother grandma or a dad or a uncle yes friends i'm sure you will agree that stories are how we learn best and i was reading forbes article and it says the most successful businesses will consistently deliver high touch to customers with one of our oldest traits and that's the telling of a story and see how powerful the storytelling is by the way many people and organization fail drastically as they don't have that story to engage and i was all the time thinking when i attended one of the storytelling session in the past i thought i should get an expert to share their wisdom on this niche topic friends as stories are never ending journey and they are something like a hidden talent and sometimes it's all in our memories and we need to bring that out so i was uh, thinking you know why not uh, tell it in a right way with a right framework and making it impactful and here is my guest on stars of learning podcast who is a storyteller by passion and profession yes friends if you are curious hearing to me till now believe me you are in the right place so get ready to decode the magic of storytelling and that's the topic for today on how to engage people's heart and mind as a good storyteller as believe me storytelling it's a powerful form of human communication and today we will have conversation with one and only nidhi mahesh founder of we storytellers so friends a quick intro about our guest nidhi mahesh with almost two decades in the business of storytelling a storyteller by passion and profession and she has been a storyteller all her life so friends i saw her profile and blog and got so glued as she digs for stories that the world is waiting to hear and i really enjoyed reading her blog and those catchy titles which she has put in which you can't miss it when you get on to her site and and i felt this is the need of the hour to master the art of storytelling so i'm sure you might not have ventured into storytelling so stay tuned guys you will see value for yourself in our conversation so put your gears on and without any further ado let me welcome my guest nidhi mahesh from we storytellers once again a warm welcome nidhi mahesh to stars of learning podcast thank you very much jyoti uh, thanks for having me and uh, i'm sure your your podcast i know this is is pretty popular and your uh, listeners uh, have had some very great uh, orators and speakers and who have uh, shared their pearls of wisdom i am i'm glad to be here and i'm uh, hoping to add some value uh, to your listeners and uh, give them some some interesting tidbits that they would love to uh, hear sure i'm i'm really excited that you are joining me uh, didi so nidhi before we jump into this interesting topic to decode the magic of storytelling so let's begin with a why nidhi 
and uh, make us understand the science of storytelling well storytelling is both uh, an art and and a science and i keep saying that uh, the magic happens when the two blend right it's a cusp of magic a cusp of science and arts where the magic actually unveils so uh, the science behind us uh, is that there are chemical reactions that happen in our mind when we are listening to a story so there, there we, you, we have recently done a blog on it the science of storytelling on our blog which is bstorytellers.in/blogs and we we explained what actually happens to your mind when you're listening to a story uh, so your your mind uh, there are the chemicals that actually come uh, that uh, that are uh, invoked when you're listening to a story there are oxytocin is 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 a is one of the uh, chemicals that uh, that actually starts your you know your experience where uh, what happens is uh, when you, when you have oxytocin this is kind of a life saver it is it is it is the marketer's friend this this is this is a hormone uh, that actually makes you or the chemical that makes you empathetic so you you are connected to something you are able to empathize because this particular chemical is invoked in your mind and that's the power of a story but how do we get to empathy right uh, so there's another um, chemical called dopamine which is actually the pleasure driven so here uh, is is aids your learning system and rewards you with pleasure uh, and all heuristic behavior that you you have are somewhere associated with this particular chemical but i don't want to get into the science behind it uh, there is cortisol uh, which actually is um, uh, invokes attention it it lets you uh, you know it's it, it seeks attention from you especially when you see a fomo campaign right get this 20% off uh, and or buy it now so this urgency that comes in is it, it kind of invokes cortisol in your mind and it makes you act it gives you uh, the fear if i don't act now maybe i'm going to miss out on something again marketers use it very effectively when they design their campaign to uh-huh. build their story so this is the science behind is there are these three uh, main uh, chemicals uh, cortisol dopamine and oxytocin that come together to give to give a holistic experience as a person who is listening to or who is reading uh, or his or his exploring a story so that's the science of it uh, and now one the science itself will not uh, help you much because this we know all this right with this is happening in our brain but how do we get there how do we invoke these uh, these emotions how do we activate these chemicals in the mind mm-hmm. and i'm sure no no one no marketer or no story will actually sit down and say okay now i'm going to activate this particular chemical in your mind or that person but this this is this is actually happening at the background what mm-hmm. do you see in front of you is the art right and that's mm-hmm. where the beauty of a story lies and a story is different for every person see you you would be reading a book i'll be reading the same book but our experiences would be a bit different the way you relate to a story is 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 very unique to us and it's yes. also very contextual there there would be instances that you would read something say 5 uh, years back and you were completely in awe with that particular writing you go back to it today you're not able to connect you don't really appreciate it that much that's because mm-hmm. context has changed your frame of mind has changed so story means different things to different people when you are, your question was why story story is something which helps us connect it is uh, and and you uh, as mothers we would see you know how we how our kids actually warm up to a story you tell them something to do and they won't be interested but the moment you say it through a story or through an incident or through an anecdote you see a much more receptiveness in them so uh, it happens to the audience it happens to the consumers if there is a story which is accompanying a product you are more likely to connect to it so uh, when you ask why story because story is connect it's as simple as that sure sure and that's a great insight uh, you know a uh, story helps us to connect and this became a base to our conversation and what i hear you loud that you know it is important in all walks of life so at corporate life 
or in any profession how how can they take this up to a next level so what are the techniques of uh, storytelling maybe so storytelling of course there there are different techniques that you employ when you're writing a story and as i said context matters a lot so there's no one size fit all or i can't give you these three things that you should do to write right those those would keep on uh, evolving and changing but there are certain basis basic fundamentals that uh, that are non compromisable right that that you cannot that's non negotiables of stories as i call them one is that uh, you have to be a very very good listener you need to know what your audience is willing to uh, absorb what is the what would make them uh, engage and connect and that comes from listening when i say listening listening is is an art in itself you listen to your audience in different ways they are cues when they are in front of you you know from their body language when they are not in front of you 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 would use data to get to them right to get to understand uh, your target audience their behaviors uh, their propensity to certain offers their propensity to the to the to what's happening around them the socio economic aspect of it uh, so understanding who your customer is or who your audience is is very important and that's where your listening comes into play you get to understand uh, what is happening around the space uh, where you, where your audience exists not just one person or a one persona but looking at it holistically then once you have uh, the understanding uh, through a deep listening you come you you identify the context of your story what because uh, you you can't have a very wide ranging story you try to say too many things together you will you will lose your audience right so we need to get very specific to what is it that i want to tell today that my audience would be interested to listen to or engage with in that we need to very narrowly look at the context in which uh, this conversation has to happen once we have the context clear then we go ahead and construct or structure our story now this is where most of the writers become lazy or you know say that okay this is going to come naturally right but this is the science this is the foundation here unless we structure my start story what is going to be begin be my beginning how am i going to begin how am i developing the plot how am i leading my audience on to an action and that's uh, the science of it that's the structure of it that structuring is very important mo i i keep saying that writing a story is 20% of work coming to that story is 80% of work that's you come to that when you are listening when you are getting getting a clarity on what you want to say uh, what are your key messages that you want to deliver and then set a context and in that context you create a structure and then you create your story around it so these are the non negotiable fundamentals of any story okay so true niti when i actually listen to stories right some stories are compelling and memorable and some childhood stories i still able to recall and and you did say that you know stories helps us to connect and uh, in the process what i feel is integrity in the story also matters so what is your thought on integrity is a core of a story you just cannot have a story which is non believable i i cannot be cheating my audience right if i do that i can do it once but never again i lose them forever so integrity is a core of story and you would see around right so many so many uh, fake news going around so many anchors shouting from the top of their lungs and but you know just by shouting or repeating something that it it is uh, it won't become truth right one day or the other you people will figure out and then they will never be able to believe you it's a trust that you lose right once you lose it it's very difficult for you to gain back so uh, the way i see it the the uh, integrity comes from the intent of your story what are you intending to do of course with uh, if i am a marketer or if i am a storyteller what i would want is uh, to have my audience's attention i do have actions for them 
that I want them to take, right? But then in doing so, of course, my intention is to engage. But in doing so, do I want to do trick them? Do I uh, do I want to deceive them? If I do that, I'm I'm actually losing them. Integrity of the story is uh, is something that uh, you know drives your trust and. Uh, there are legitimate means or to gain visibility and to develop engagement. And then on the other hand, you have cheap theatrics and a free for all circus. Hmm. So misleading on purpose or creating a false narrative or masquerading uh, wild goose chase as facts. So facts are facts, facts remain fact, right? You cannot manipulate a fact. So for example, if I'm doing a research for a story, I need to go to a credible source. I cannot just quote just about anybody. It cannot be a hearsay, right? And uh, facts have to be validated. People who are, uh, if I'm speaking to you, Jyoti, I would know that you are uh, a practitioner in learning and development, right? If I have a, sto- if I have a, a thought on learning and development, I can validate with you. But for example, if I have a, uh, if I have a thought on, say, uh, artificial intelligence, I cannot come to you to validate that, right? I need to go yeah. to, a, to a credible source who can validate. So, and you would see this happening on a daily basis. You would see uh, someone speaking about a, a topic of uh, of that the person has absolutely no uh, basis to know, right? I may have a, I, I may have an opinion, but does my opinion count? Do I do I bring that depth of understanding? or the validity of facts in that conversation. So therefore, integrity is very important. And as a storyteller, we have to be very, very careful which facts are we putting in and are our facts uh, really validated. Well said, and I can't agree more. Uh, so beautifully laid out, Niti. So, so then here is a, a critical question to you, Niti. As I see your profile where you equip marketing leaders across business to you know define design and execute the campaigns and you actually craft those engaging stories right so how do we build and deliver that engaging stories uh, say for a specific business scenarios and and it's just not about the story but we need to drive an intended action too so how do we go about that uh, great question, uh, Jyoti. And this is something uh, that I grapple with on a daily basis. So uh, uh, if you go to my uh, uh, blog site, you'll find a particular blog that says um, of content and storytelling. So here's the difference between a content that you churn out or a story you tell. Marketers have been, I won't say forced, but yeah, most of the time we just... Uh, look at quantity of content coming out. Am I writing so many blogs? Am I creating so many case studies? Do I have enough white papers? So what we go for is most of the time quantity because you want to keep on bombarding your your audience with content. Now, am I able to connect with that? You keep on getting something or the other on your inbox. You keep on seeing something or the other on your timeline. Do you really engage? No, right? It has to be something that actually appeals to you. Does it matter to me? The simple question that every every person, every market or storyteller has to answer for the audience is what is in it for me? Yeah. What am I giving that uh, that person who's reading that particular piece? That's that's the core of it. So uh, that and that's why you need storytelling because, as I said, right, stories connect. Now. To give you a scenario, for example, uh, in most of the time in sales pitches, you would have 50, 60 slides. Uh, you know, a salesperson in an enterprise sales environment uh, has got 40 minutes from the decision maker. The person mm-hmm. goes, uh, goes there uh, in a room full of uh, executives. You have a projector running and the person goes and quickly to puts the uh, you know, pen drive and starts the presentation and begins by telling all the stuff about who the person or is, what is the company all about, you know, and say all sorts of things. But what is it that you want the decision maker to do? What is it that you are at that point of time 
proposing what pain are you solving right that conversation is either buried after 35 minutes of your 40 minute conversation or is left for another day now where have you connected you did a lot of preparation you put everything you had on that presentation in you know 50 slide because you wanted to cover everything hmm. right but what was the information that you were giving that the person could not find himself you should you could have talked about the pain you could have talked about why you are here and why should that person trust you to solve the problem that he has but that's yeah. that's a story that he wants to listen to and the yeah. conversation has to be at eye level i am talking to a person face to face or a person on a nowadays on a remote uh, uh, environment when i say uh, eye level is that i am on the same wavelength and to get the person on the same wavelength it's important that we build a common ground we are in our mental space in different different zones right not just a time zone but you know we i might be coming right from a very very uh, stressful meeting i may have been come uh, a discussion where my performance was being discussed for example or i have a child who's been continuously knocking on my door and i'm pretty irritated or i've just uh, finished uh, a good conversation with a colleague and who's appreciating me so i'm in a happy state of mind so i'm in a different zone you are in a different zone how do we bridge that gap how do we come to a common ground and setting a common ground sometimes is not just the business so we need to know the person i'm going to speak to do a bit of research where the person comes from what kind of schooling which college or which school that the person went to what kind of interest does he or she have so what happens is when i'm going there and suppose i say hey jyoti you uh, you are from bangalore oh i am from bangalore to which place so what happens is you think that it's a small talk but somewhere i'm bringing that person down to the same level okay you went to that college i i also went to that college or someone i know went to that college what you have done is that from wherever that person was in his mental state you have brought them to that school or that college at that point in time where you were also there so you have built a common ground or for example if you are not able to do that with your story that you are presenting you so so you are talking about a pain that the person may have so for example you you are going there going to a company and talking about an lms uh, platform that they are considering now if you say that you start with that 50% of people companies have L, have an lms where uh, the um, employees are not fully utilizing it they are leaving it half done now that's something 50% somewhere out there it's a number the moment you say you know what the company yesterday i went to a company i met an employee and said you know what i really find it uh, interesting to have this uh, you know learning program it's just that i am uh, i'm not able to spend time at one go right and that's the problem that i face how do i get over that i'm bringing that uh, problem i'm actually creating a scenario that you may be facing because if i'm trying to sell you a product which actually enables uh, an employee to be able to continue the learning in in yeah. different uh, phases which would be a value prop of my product i am able to sell that to you at the very beginning without actually making a sales pitch that's because i have been able to connect to the pain that you may have and that too with a very very relatable experience right so this is where uh, the storytelling comes in interesting uh, uh, nuti so you laid out the complete ground on talking about the content to what's in it from the point of audience looking at the pain points and trust part and specifically important why you are here and bridge that gap in an appropriate way and bring that to a common ground so it doesn't really look like a sales pitch yes so what i so that's what i see right uh, but sometimes uh, and of course we have to sell that's what businesses all are all about i i, I run a company which uh, which which does storytelling for a living right so i'm also trying to sell but i cannot be selling it on your face right i need to be able to solve a problem that you have and give you the trust that yes nidhi is someone or nidhi's team is someone or these storytellers 
can help me solve this problem and how do i build that trust not by uh, you know blatantly going and saying please buy uh, you know tie up with us and we'll be we'll give you so many pieces of content in a month it's not about how much can i deliver it's about how much value can i bring on table right that that's a, that's a conversation that's important this is very powerful so so niti you have been in a, a creative pursuit being a mentor to storytellers and bloggers right please uh, tell us on you know are there any type of stories which we should be mindful so jyoti as i said in the beginning stories are unique to people and stories are unique to context uh, as long as your story has integrity as long as your story is built on a pre- on a premise of the listener what the listener wants to know so the, what is the storyteller doing he's actually bridging the va- uh, the gap between what you want to say and the what the audience wants to listen most of the time especially in the marketing context this gap is there or it ca- this gap keeps on increasing and that's where the marketing campaigns or uh, or any conversation for that matter fails right yeah. we keep on doing it in our personal lives right i want to say something yeah my husband wants to listen to something else and and we are just not able to communicate and right? i keep on saying hey i wanted this and you didn't listen the person says okay i was listening you didn't it didn't come out what you were trying to tell me so there's a gap and this gap exists in our personal lives it uh, it also there in our professional um, uh, sphere when we are trying to communicate and there should not be this gap to bridge this gap is the story the story because the story is always told from the point of view of what the reader might take away from it that's something that uh, you should keep in mind when you're talking uh, when you're creating a story and stories are unique right so when you say what what kind of stories i should have in mind or or what stories we should not tell so stories which are not uh, relatable stories which are only uh, there are a lot of things that, uh, and i keep saying to what uh, to to people who write uh, along with us is that a lot of things is there in your mind okay when i'm reading that piece it's actually not coming through then i ask is it is this what you wanted to say you say yes exactly that's what now thing is it's like half of the uh, words are inside your mouth i'm not able to listen to it because you have not fully expressed it so uh, some more, many at times we take it for granted that my my audience knows this right mm. it's not always yeah, yeah. the case True. not uh, i'm i'm assuming too much i'm putting the onus of deciphering my intent on the audience now that's too much to ask right mm. uh, if if you if you if you recall um the genre of uh, the so called art films right mm. Mm. uh it would never become a mass movie or it would not relate to a large, large segment of audience that's because it 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 had it put a lot of onus on the viewer to understand and decipher the context on the other hand the mass movies they appeal to a larger audience because they 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 just put everything out there bare got it uh, and of course you can have a choice that you choose one context but as a storyteller my job is to make it make sure that my audience my intended audience is able to appreciate the story got it so so niti you were telling that there are some basic fundamentals which are non negotiable and like listening context or the construct the structure of we put in so is there any framework or a template you would want to recommend for us to follow so let's like said for me a construct or a the fundamental framework of a story definitely is Uh, an understanding of the flow for story intent of the story the key messages that you want to convey and and, and what action do you want your um, audience to take right all these when you keep in mind and create a structure and that structure is 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 very contextual 
it changes. Sometimes I lead with intrigue, right? I, I wrote a piece which says you should not be reading this piece. Hmm. Now, that is an intrigue. The moment I tell you not to do it, you'll say, why is asking? Why is this person telling me not to do it? So that's an intrigue. It works in certain cases. Or yes. there's an intro which is, uh, which is which which kind of gives you a real bummer, gives you like, oh my God, it's happening. Or when when we were waiting for the vaccine, you if you say that forty eight hours to go, and India will have its own vaccine. Now this is a this is again a different kind of lead. So you lead differently in different contexts. There are different ways of saying things. Then there's uh, we call it bullet leads. Uh, which are like, uh, which says, uh, which kind of goes like tuck tuck tuck, and first thing, mm-hmm. the, the world is changing. You have a few things uh, that you need to you know, start working on. But what is uh, fundamental to it is, what is it that you want to say? Your intent and messaging, the flow of a story, and the call to action that you want to to drive home. What do you want your ad- audience to do? So, so Nidhi, uh, it's just not the story, right? We need to create a high impact. And uh, being a trainer myself, I also think sometimes your body language, your voice modulation, suspense, the way you said about bringing those uh, titles also makes a difference. It's like seeing a movie, right? So, so what should one focus or practice while storytelling? Because... I, I want to get to know your views because you have been in that field because not all of them carry that uh, charismatic style, right? So what's your views on this? Well, what I have realized and that this is all experience, Jyoti, I have not been to a business school, I have not been to a mass form a course uh, you know, uh, to learn this. I, I have been a hands-on person, I have been on the ground all my life so my learning experience has been from everyday hap- you know, experiences that I see uh, and observe so one thing I realize is that there is no set pattern you cannot copy someone you can idealize someone you can be inspired by someone you can admire someone's style but your style is your own right and you need to develop that style focus on yourself look at yourself Stand in front of a mirror and, and then talk to yourself. If you can impress yourself, I think you'll be able to impress. The, 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 uh, and as a trainer, I think you would agree with me that the most critical or the most uh, critique that we get for, for us is ourselves, right? We, we are the people who keep judging ourselves. So the moment we stop doing that and we look at ourselves and say, okay, this is working for us and this is not working for us. Then, then uh, you know, our focus is much more on what is possible. What is my strength? Uh, some people are very good orators. Hmm. Some people are not. So how do you bridge that gap? And that is through practice. Right? Some, someone can just go onto the stage and win the day. Someone will need to practice that. And, uh, uh, and no less than Steve Jobs. If you see, the guy has to practice a lot. You know, for every... Uh, appearance every move of him was practiced and practiced to perfection the voice modulation the way he's going to walk on the stage how he's going to pick out uh, say for example if you see his uh, uh, the launch of macbook air and the way he said air you know the voice that he brought in that 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 was not something that came spontaneously it was practiced so practice is very important and uh, understand what are your strengths. Play on your strengths. If you're not comfortable speaking spontaneously, there's no more, there's no harm in you carrying a chip. Mm. Uh, and another thing that uh, is important is uh, the ability to look the audience in the eye. Mm. You cannot be enamored. You cannot be scared of that who's there in front of you. Because if you are, if that is the case, then your conversation will fail, right? And it's a two-way communication. You have to interact. 
interaction can happen when you are able to look your audience in the eye. When I say you look your audience in the eye, it doesn't literally mean that I'm staring at them. It's that, uh, you know, we are able to build that connect. And I'm, uh, you have to be then and there with your audience. So these are the things that I think are important. And these are things that I've learned uh, the hard way. So I am just sharing my experience from, you know, this is not something that I can recommend from a book or something. Sure, sure, Nidhi. So, so Nidhi, uh, most of my listeners are professionals and students who are aspiring to their career, career growth. And I see your mission is to build and nurture a new breed of business storytellers. So, how to weave a story to make an uh, impactful presentation? Uh, as professional, we keep doing that, right? And most of the time we use data, numbers, statistics. And how do we communicate that key messages? Because it's the PPT. How do we do that to visualization and storytelling? Is there any insight from you? This again is a very interesting question, Jyoti. And I saw, try to solve this problem uh, with my clients. And uh, what I keep telling them is that numbers in themselves are orphans. They don't really belong anywhere unless you tie it, uh, tie them up with, you know, the context. How, where are we presenting that number? Who's going to listen to that? Uh, what am I trying to convey through that number? Uh, that, these are the questions that we need to answer before we put a number out there. Right? You would have seen this. Uh, mindless numbers going around uh, with the pandemic, right? You know, someone is saying 25% rise in cases. Someone is saying 300, 3 lakh people uh, rendered jobless. So these numbers are, okay, these numbers are important. These numbers need to be told. But in what context? You cannot keep on saying the same number in every story. And that's what's happening. And you have suddenly got... Um, you have, you have a version now of reading the same numbers in different contexts. Then another thing that happens is we always quote a Gartner or a McKinsey or a PwC or a Deloitte. This many percentage people are adopting AI. These many companies are, are going to spend on XYZ technology. These, uh, the number of uh, employment, like employment numbers, 5 lakh people out of job. Now, the moment you say five lakh people out of job, it creates a scare. Right. Is my intent is to create a scare? Or is my intent to say, okay, five lakh people have lost a job, but uh, you know what? In the in the next 10 years or 10 months, the, the opportunities are opening up and there's going to be a large number of uh, uh, hiring provided you have XYZ skill. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, when we talk about AI and automation. One of the bigger misconceptions is that it's going to take away your job. And that's a tightrope that every company has to walk. Whenever they talk about automation, they create a fear in their employees. Okay, this automation is going to cut my job. And then what happens is they are these people, they are, your employees are uh, not fully buying into the program or the project that you're trying to roll in. There's a resistance coming in, and with that resistance, the half-hearted effort in actually implementing that. So you, 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 they because they are working for you, they may not be able to say no to it. But you would see the hesitant, they're hesitant to apply, they're hesitant to take it forward. That's because you have what, uh, what you have come, uh, what you have said, is that you know automation is going to bring in twenty five percent more. Uh, you know, yeah, this will be a, a speed. Right, the, the hours of work that you're doing in will be less. Now, what happens is you start thinking, okay, if, if my, wh where are these 25% of my time going? That means uh, I'll, I'll, there'll be less people on the floor, right? So now th that interpretation may be wrong. You may you can say that, okay, you know what? Uh, we will we we you we we have two more processes coming up, and where we would need really experienced people and you are you are meant for that let the robot do the menial work now the moment you put that context here the story gets a positive spin uh, and number has a positive connotation 
So uh, the numbers, as I said, are, 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 are orphans. You need to tie them up. You need to put a context around that. And again, you have to narrow down the, your messaging. You, you cannot say the same thing to different audiences. Uh, you need to make the audience connect. You need to ma uh, make the audience internalize that message. And therefore, uh, a very focused uh, message is important. Brevity is important. And the space for the other person to take a decision, right? Get, let, give that space to the person. Just don't keep on, uh, in, if you have a one hour time for, for a conversation, leave at least 10 to 15% of your time, if not more, you know, for, for the other person to put up questions. In fact, I would suggest 25% of time, right? Where, where the person is able to come up with his or her observations and have a conversation. Uh, you need to converse. Build space for that. Again, business storytelling has become the most uh, powerful tool, right, for today's global leaders, and that's the need of the hour. So how do we discover stories from real life? Well, every day we encounter so many incidents, so many things happen in, in the course of a day, right? And all our life we have been collecting stories. It's just that we need to pick up the right one when we are having the conversation. And uh, you know, it's not that you create a list somewhere on your laptop, you know, and an Excel sheet and say, okay, this story, I'm going to say this. It doesn't happen. It's actually um, pretty intuitive and spontaneous, if you see. So, for example, if I'm talking to you and I understand that you are from the learning and development background, I would try to look for, um, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking of an incident where uh, a learning and development context has come in. Say, uh, something I did while I was creating some uh, service or some product or the way I would have interacted with a learning platform. That's, that's references that are coming directly uh, as we speak, right? And you're picking up a story from there. So, uh, so the, you actually dig into your life experience. Uh, many a times the, there are anecdotes that you have heard, say, for example, when I talked about Steve Jobs. Now, I had not rehearsed this. I did not think that I'm going to talk about this. Because we talked, started talking about practice and we, it, 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 uh, it occurred to me that, okay, I had seen that particular law he had uh, and uh, I was wondering what made it so perfect. And when I went down and read about it, I found that it was actually a, a good example of how even the top leaders uh, focus and practice. So the anecdote came naturally. So uh, we all have these stories uh, in, in our kitty. It's just that we need to relate to what will actually resonate with my audience at that point in time. Uh, just pull out the right one. We, we, all, we all have a bag full of stories. Hmm. Yes, yes. So we have to stop, think and reflect on what's available in our kitty. Hmm. Everyone has stories, so. So, Niti, uh, in any storytelling, right, like we, you build that curiosity. Sometimes there are characters, there are suspense and many other elements that goes into the story. Right? Is there any strategy that, how do we do that uh, from the business context? Again, a very interesting question. Jyoti and I had a discussion around it uh, just recently with my team. So let me give you that example. Uh, when we write uh, for our clients and we do most of the marketing content, we cannot look at things from the street, vanilla, you know, prospect saying that, okay, this is a case study, this is um, a white paper and we just go start writing. It depends on the, on, on the subject that we are writing. The case in point was uh, we were talking about cybersecurity and uh, the client had come up with a solution uh, which would uh, increase the security quotient uh, if you use that product. Now, I'm talking about that product. I'm talking about why should, uh, you know, uh, the, um, say, banks uh, have this kind of a tool in their secure to, to tighten their cybersecurity. Now, when I looked at uh, what my colleague had written, it had all the elements. It was, start, it was talking about all the features, all, all the advantages. But somewhere it was 
you you are cooking something and you know you have all the ingredients but something is not coming together the taste is not there you know so uh, what do we do so then i told um, my my colleague that okay what are you writing you're writing a threat report you're writing uh, that you're writing about uh, an incident that can actually have a very very strong impact on on the company it's like someone is going to steal right and they, and uh, what are you trying to do you are trying to prevent from uh, prevent the theft from happening or if the theft actually happens you're trying to catch the burglar at with with, with minimum time therefore what are you doing you are actually creating uh, a thriller it's a thriller in your hand you have, then you have a plot you have you have a thief uh, and you have a detective running after that person and trying to prevent him from doing the damage or in case the damage is done you immediately act and uh, you you are going to preempt that person's move so if you look at it it's actually a thriller in your hand if you bring in that excitement into your piece right mm-hmm. now you, you build a narrative you build you create the suspense you create your uh, characters when i say characters i'm actually not saying that there's going to be a villain uh, persona put in there and a james bond put in there it's but you, your persona is there the threat itself is a villain right the the yeah. threat is is your james bond right so when you start thinking in that line you have a a construct of a thriller in your hand uh, when you approach that story from that point of view you see the enrichment that comes into that piece right You, you, your personas keep change. you you depend it depends sometimes we we need to talk, take a very motivational tone mm, uh, yeah sometimes it has to be uh, a, a, a humor wit so we would have seen this recent uh, and we did a piece again i come keep coming back to our blogs so uh, we did a recent blog which is where we talk about wit humor and uh, and and the way you are able to connect you would have seen this campaign by pampers you know where they talk about it takes two for parenting now people could have taken a very activist kind of a tone here right for why why shouldn't father contribute to rearing a child right valid question but then how you are, you, are, you are trying to put a gun on someone's head or you are trying to take a, you know you are trying to point fingers at someone but look at this it, it takes two campaign it brings in um, the whole joy of parenthood of fatherhood right is the same and that that um, uh, there's a bit of a romance in the sense that you're romanticizing that relationship you are showing that uh, uh, as, as a father what kind of uh, joys you have where you know uh, changing a nappy is is not you know, you're not making it a oh my god i have to do this but you're making it a it a kind of a experience that you would want to have with your child now so that that story when you see it brings in that wit humor and relevance and uh, it takes a tone uh, which actually appeals to you right so i think uh, the 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 way you approach your story depends uh, about on uh, what kind of action you want your audience to take and you have to be very very careful there because uh, there's no right or wrong way of putting a story it's just that it depends on the intent that you have behind it got it so so niti what was uh, your learning as you have done so many workshops and connected with corporates and with the business leaders on storytelling my learnings and this is this is what uh, actually enriches uh, our our work uh, jyoti when the learning that we we gain from each interaction and what i what i discovered through the the interactions and the workshops that we've had so far is that uh, every uh, person is unique every person's um, approach uh, is is unique and i cannot put uh, a rule and say okay everyone has to follow this or anyone uh, if, if, if so many people pass out every year from uh, from in uh, from uh, management schools and engineering schools and learn the same thing but the way they apply is different so there there's uniqueness in in every person and uh, we we need to be cognizant of that and uh, when we are creating stories when we are crafting 
messages for our audiences we need to keep that uniqueness in mind it is it cannot be a herd kind of a message but of course uh, uh, when we say one to one communication it's not always possible because we are uh, selling products to masses so therefore what we try to do uh, and you would heard this term we personalize uh, our messages when i say personalize again we we bring in a very strong focus on my on on the messaging right and the messaging has to be relevant has to be timely has to appeal to the audience in that particular time and that's in, the, in their their mental state at that po- uh, moment so my learnings have been um, the the uniqueness uh, in the art of storytelling sure nidhi so nidhi in anything we do we do see challenges right so so you need to look at pros and cons in every subject so what are the challenges in this uh, storytelling well uh, first for many a times i i have all the thoughts in my mind i'm just uh, looking at a blank paper thinking where to start so many a times the it's like a starting trouble you have with your car right the engine doesn't start and and then you realize that the battery this is down so the battery actually comes in from uh, being in a good state of mind and uh, having that uh, clarity so uh, the challenge is one of the bigger challenge that i face is when we don't have clarity and uh, initially what happens is many uh, many of uh, you know people they hold back from asking questions they somehow think if i ask this from my client maybe the person will think that okay i don't know anything right mm-hmm. but then yeah. if i don't ask i won't get the answer so if i'm not asking questions i am not showing that i know everything i'm actually showing that i really don't know what i need to ask right that i'm actually i am I'm, i'm exhibiting a false sense of uh, no all no one is no all and there are certain certain questions that need to be asked we need to have the clarity on 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 purpose on messages on on uh, who um, we are talking to sometimes this information is available sometimes it's not and sometimes uh, and and it's very important for us to do a gap analysis right what we have in our hand and what we need to make the story engaging and complete so that gap area needs to be identified and uh, uh, filled up and uh, so the, so the challenge is not as much to fill that gap but to figure out what do i need to to fill that gap the whole course of discovery uh, is is very important and we need to be very very careful about this uh, as i told you right integrity is important so the um, uh the credible the credibility of source is very important right we are uh, we will be sharing our framework of asking questions uh, uh very very shortly because we found that and that's how we learn uh, jyoti every morning when uh, we do a team meet uh, we discuss uh, of course what's what's going to be on on the agenda today and stuff and then we also pick up challenges that my team faces in terms of delivery in terms of crafting a content or telling a story and then we try to find solutions okay this this is happening what could be the core of the problem and then we brainstorm and come up with a solution and which we see is is actually a framework or uh, a, a way of telling story uh, so what we are now trying to do and most of the time we are uh, constrained with time and resources to be able to record that or uh, you know to uh, actually uh compile uh, that information but now we are making a con- you know, conscious effort because these are this is how we are learning the art of storytelling and we want to share it with the larger audience so we are now trying to compile all these uh, learnings in a way that uh, you know that can be shared so so is there anything else nidhi you would like to add that will be of value to my listeners i keep telling everyone that if i can you can too there's nothing uh, uh, that holds you back 
It's just that you have to identify your calling. Yes. It's just that you need to listen to it um, intently. And yeah. Don't do it just because you have to. There's nothing like that. There's nothing that you have to do. You always have an option. Yeah. Don't. I, I don't think that we should let insecurities walk out. I know they're very, very real, but then uh, there's always a larger purpose. So I think we need to just... And then when, when it comes to storytelling, what I can share is that keep your eyes and ears open. Keep listening. Keep observing. Keep absorbing. And then you'll be able to know, improve or enhance your stories. Wonderful. So, so guys, all the links and resources which we have discussed in this episode will be made available in my show notes page of my podcast, Stars of Learning. And also on my website, prajutaknowledge.com. That is P-R-A-J-V-I-T-A, knowledge.com for your quick reference. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for being on this show and sharing all your wisdom. And I really enjoyed the every conversation we have heard and many things I have learned in this conversation, starting from science of uh, storytelling to how to the integrity to bring in the core of story and, and the integrity with the intent is what you highlighted and the content it's not about what's in it for me, but it's the core thing what, from the point of audience what you uh, recommended. And you also told a note to not about how much can we deliver, but how much are we bringing a value, right? Numbers, they are like orphaned by themselves and how do we make it more contextual and giving that space is important to internalize and come up with. Every line I think uh, you brought in was mesmerizing and the last one, if I can, you can do. That's the calling. So I'm sure my listeners will enjoy it and really appreciate your time. It's been wonderful having you on my show. Jyoti, it was a great pleasure talking to you uh, and thank you for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, amazed how we connected and uh, you reached out. It was uh, it was completely uh, by chance, but it's very great that we spoke, and I'm sure your listeners would have some something to take away from this conversation. I'm uh, I'm glad, grateful for you to you for uh, having me, and uh, in the August company of uh, so many people who have spoken to you on their life journeys, and I'm sure uh, there's a lot for us to learn from each other. Thank you for having me here, uh, Jyoti, and I wish your le- readers. Um, Sorry, listeners, I'm so used to saying leaders. Listeners, uh, all the best and uh, happy stories to them. I hope they find it of value. That's really great and gratitude, Nidhi. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. And if you have got any learning or motivated hearing to this show, then make sure you share this podcast with your friends and post it on all social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Insta and do tag us and let your friends know about this amazing information you have learned and let this piece of information help many others to engage, enlighten and empower. Thank you so much for your patience and tuning into this show. Bye for now. Take good care of yourself and go out and do something engaging, enlightening and empowering.